Hey, this is Susan Blanton with the Create Happy Now podcast, and welcome back to the Intuitive Masters of Happiness series. This is episode 14 of 20, and we have six more after today. We have been exploring what your intuition is, how to connect with yours, and all the magic that happens when you strengthen your intuition. So make sure to stay tuned every Wednesday as we feature one guest interview from the Intuitive Masters of Happiness conference held back in February of this year, 2023. We had such an awesome turnout. We want to make all 20 interviews available to you in audio version on the Create Happy Now podcast and YouTube channel. Now, if you want to watch the interviews rather than just listen to the audio version, you can download all 20 interviews today to have in your own library for just $27.95, which is $20 off the VIP access package that was offered back in February. You can go to my website, createhappynow.com and go to the events tab to get your download today. Now, before I get to my next guest, for those of you who struggle with quieting your mind and want to be able to do it in an easier, more creative way and learn how to start your journey to happiness, abundance, peace, and purpose, and say yes to life every day, I want to remind you that I have a new meditation app coming out this summer in just a few more weeks that is designed to do just that. I also have a new meditation YouTube channel. Both are called Create Happy Meditations. If you'd like to be on the waiting list for the app, go to my website and click on the meditation app tab and sign up today. Last week, Maria Grossbaum and I talked about encouraging listeners of all ages, artists or not, to create, paint, draw, anything as a strong tool to build and strengthen your intuition. My next guest is Michelle Muirpour. Michelle began her transformation journey 20 years ago when she was searching for her purpose and true calling in life. She had checked all the boxes in her life, the degree, the career, the marriage, the big house and all the things, but she wasn't happy and there was still something missing. Then it happened, the huge transition in her life 18 years ago that forced her to drastically declutter and release everything that wasn't serving her and changed her lifestyle to start from a clean slate, this time on her own simplified terms. Two years later, she found her calling, and that's when she started her business in 2004, Organized Life by Michelle, to help others simplify their lives and focus on only what brings them true happiness. Here's the director's cut, getting you down to her juicy wisdom about how to declutter your life from the inside out and how to get out from being stuck by using your intuition. Oh, yes. I totally get the check the boxes, the degree, the career, the marriage, the big house, and then what are you left with? Once you're, you're just left with the degree, <laughs> the career, the marriage, and the big house, and and no happiness. Um, someone left out a big uh element to our happiness right Mm -hmm. and no one taught me how to be happy like (laughs) (laughs) right you know um but it's it's not all your external stuff and then the thing is is people are adding more and more external stuff well maybe this will make me happy maybe this will make us happy you know we got shopping therapy right and Mm -hmm. before we know we've got clutter We got physical clutter and then we've got (laughs) mental clutter. So how do you get rid of all that? Uh Uh-huh. Yeah, I, that was me. I turned to retail therapy and I had all this stuff and I thought that would make me happy. But at the end of the day, there was something deeper that was absolutely missing. I knew there was something deeper that was missing. I just didn't know how to go about finding it. And so that's when my journey began. And in order to understand what, it was going to take to make me happy. I had to understand who I was. Who's Michelle? What is it going to take to Michelle happy? But first you got to figure out who Michelle is. And then that's when the whole self-discovery journey started to really figure out who I was and why I was doing the things I was doing, what it was going to take to really bring me that internal peace and happiness and joy. And that's when it all began. That's when everything shifted because I started looking at things completely differently. 
Right. And, but the thing is, before you did all that, you had to go, something's got to change. Something's mm -hmm. got to give. And you have to go, I'm going to commit to change and seek and, uh, and be curious. Yeah. I just literally woke up one day and I said, I can't deal with this anymore. Right. Like, enough is enough. <laughs> yeah. I cannot imagine getting up one more day and going into work and doing this work that doesn't bring me any fulfillment. You know, I don't want to just keep collecting a paycheck. I want to do something meaningful. I can't imagine one more night of coming home to this marriage that <laughs> is making me feel miserable and empty on the inside. And again, no fulfillment. I just, I can't do this anymore. I, I know I was placed on this earth to do bigger and better things. And this is not it. And I need to figure out what is. Right. So what was your first step other than this is it? I'm, I'm done. Like you have just, that's it. So yeah. what, so did you have some intuitive pull? Uh, you know, I wish I could say I knew exactly what I needed to do. I didn't know exactly what that first step was other than I need to really start looking at other things, exploring other things. And I need to um, start going forward with my heart and not so much with my head. Cause up until that point, everything I had done was head-based mm -hmm. and head thinking instead of heart thinking and heart feeling. <laughs> so I knew I had to do things that made me happy. And that's where the exploratory phase began. And really I was just exploring all kinds of things. I was, you know, I needed a creative outlet. I was in a corporate technology, you know, um, mindset and, doing uh, IT things and it was not very creative and and I knew that wasn't for me. So I started exploring other things outside of that, um, acting and modeling and dancing and art and um, a little bit of traveling just to see what was going to stick and where I was going to be led in terms of what I needed to do next in my life. And I just I just let it kind of lead me in that way. And that's such a good key component is, first of all, getting to know yourself because sometimes you don't know what you want. Mm -hmm. You know, you know what you don't want. Well, now it's time to figure out what you do want, right? Mm -hmm. um, and then that way you can kind of give your intuition an idea of what they can help you with, right? And yes. then you can open yourself up and be open to those nudges so that it can go, okay, well, I'm sending you over here, you know? Mm -hmm. And, uh, so tell us about one of your first, like big, uh, moves that you took. Oh gosh. I, I took so many. Um, <laughs> so I started planning my exit strategy of how I was going to leave my marriage because it was very toxic and holding me back. And that was one of the big things that was not serving me. So I knew I had to leave that so that I could have wings again to fly and soar and do the things I really enjoyed because I wasn't able to do that in, in the marriage. So um, so I started planning my exit strategy. And um, I did that too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And. Um, you know, and I shared more of that when, when we did, um, you know, our first podcast together of how I, I left so that I'm not going to get into that whole story, but if anyone's watched the podcast, <laughs> yes, they can listen to that podcast, but it was just really fascinating how everything started to come together when I made that decision and put that intention out into the universe that this is not for me anymore. And I need to break free from this and go towards the thing that is going to serve me. And everything kind of blossomed from there. I started, um, you know, really exploring other things. Like I started traveling because one of the best ways to get to know who you are and how resilient you are um, is to travel and not just travel with people, but travel on your own. And one of the other big things I did was I, as scared as I was to do it, I booked a one-way ticket uh, to go. My plan was to go vis visit Southeast Asia and do maybe a dozen different countries. And I just remember when I booked the ticket, it was on Christmas Eve and I ended up flying out two days later. <laughs> 
Well, and it was one way to get to India and I had no idea um, where I was going to go exactly or what I was going to do other than I was going to land in Mumbai and I knew that I had a colleague who was also going to be there at the same time for a wedding and you know I was invited to that wedding that's all I knew is that the first thing I'm going to do is go to Mumbai and go to this wedding after that I had no idea and I just remember telling my parents that I'm going to I mean, I'm going to be gone for a little bit. And they, of course, wanted to know, well, where are you going to be? When are you coming back? I said, I only know my first stop. I don't know anything beyond that. And my father asked me, so when do you think you'll be back? I said, I don't know, maybe two, three months. He said, what? <laughs> In two, three weeks. And so long story short, I ended up coming back eight months later, seven countries later, and it was the most amazing, transformative, eye-opening, and humbling experience ever um, that I was able to give myself. That was a true gift to, you know, the self-exploration and self-discovery journey that I needed to really figure out who I was. And I came back with a whole new perspective. And I knew, I just knew that I was on the right track to something because the entire time I let my intuition guide me and I was able to go with the flow during that whole journey, eight months, because none of it was planned and everything just kind of fell into place and beautiful experiences and beautiful people I met along the way, giving me tips and little nudges and, you know, guidance. And, you know, I, I saw all of them as angels that were sent to me, you know, from the universe to kind of help me down that path because I was really scared. Before I got on that flight, uh, I remember I was uh, transferring in New Jersey to go to, um, to get on Air India to then fly over to Mumbai. And I was sitting in the waiting area outside of the gate and everyone was boarding. And then they came up to me and I was crying. I was in tears. And they said, what's wrong? I said, I, I can't go. I can't go because the person who invited me for this wedding is not answering their phone. And I don't know if I'm going to get there and I'm going to have no one to greet me or, you know, if, if I'm going to have someone. And they said, well, you do realize that they are nine hours time difference, right? So they're probably asleep uh -huh. and it's going to be okay. The manager actually came over and talked through, um, through it with me and said, it's going to be fine. The people there are lovely people. You're going to absolutely enjoy your time. And, you know, worst case scenario, you just get on a plane and come back home. It's going to be just fine. And I said, okay. And I kind of wiped my tears and I said, I guess I'll get on this flight. <laughs> Oh, aren't you glad? Oh my gosh. I had no idea what was waiting for me. It was just, I had this whole journey waiting to unfold before me. And I was able to take that first step as scary as it was. And but that your logic and your ego was trying to block you. Totally, totally. And that's, that's one of the big things that now when I work with clients is I see that there's so many things that get in the way of the thing that they really want to do. And when I tell them, you know, what's going to make you happy? What are you passionate about? You know, and then their eyes light up and they start talking about it. But then, you know, I can tell that fear kind of sets in and the brain wants to take over and talk them out of those things. I'm like, no, let's, let's kind of work through decluttering, removing the fear and, you know, the ego that's getting in the way and kind of keeping you stuck exactly where you are so you can, you know, just explore and soar because it's just, there's a beautiful world out there. And so many people are just stuck exactly where they are, like up here, not just physically stuck in one place, but you know, they're, they're really stuck and I want them to break free from that. So the, the, the kind of buzzword these days, is the freedom lifestyle. And so what does that actually look like? I mean, people are curious, they want it, they see other people having it, but they don't really know, like, what does it take to, you know, have that? Um, you know, they think probably there's a lot of sacrifice or it's really hard or they make it look like it's really easy, but it's not, or, uh, oh, there's probably a bunch of people out there trying to do it, but they're just failing miserably. Um, so what exactly is freedom lifestyle? 
Yeah, to me, freedom lifestyle is the freedom to choose what you want to do. You wake up in the morning and you choose your schedule for that day, the activities, the events, the people you want to talk to. No one has made that choice for you. No one says that you must go and clock in at this time and then you work X number of hours doing this type of work because this is what I'm telling you needs to be done and you have this deadline and then you come home and then you must you know, tend to this and this, and because you have pills and responsibilities, we all, we all have responsibilities, right? But it's how you go about choosing how you want to live your life. Um, that makes all the difference. And I was in corporate for 20 years and that was my life. It, everything was kind of, I felt chosen for me. Yes. I, I chose the, the location where I wanted to work, but did I really want to work there? I was doing it out of necessity, right? I needed the paycheck. I needed to pay for my bills and I had those responsibilities. And then I realized there's a better way to go about it. And I could have the freedom to choose the freedom to choose what kind of work I want to do, what kind of business I want to have not working for someone else, the freedom to choose who I wanted to work with, what projects I wanted to have, how I wanted to impact the world, how I wanted to get up and spend my day, um, where I wanted to live when I was working. And so then I created this whole way of having this freedom lifestyle for myself and being able to, you know, bring other people towards that lifestyle. But it starts with a mindset shift, mm -hmm. knowing that you can have this for yourself, that you deserve to have this for yourself. And if that's what you want, then, you know, we can make it happen. Even if you don't think that you can, I tell people, if you have a passion and a desire to do something completely different than what you're doing right now. Let's let's say the type of work that you're doing. If you have a passion and desire to do something completely different, then that's all you need to come to me with. Tell me your passion, tell me your desire. Tell me whatever your ideas are, whatever your dreams are, and then we can make it happen, right? We can, we can create that freedom lifestyle because I'm now helping people launch their passion businesses so they can have the freedom lifestyle. Last year, for instance, I was able to live and work from Mexico for almost six months, right? Wow. I wasn't able to do that when I was in the corporate world right. <laughs> at all. I wasn't able to work remotely. And, you know, one of the blessings in disguise that came from the pandemic was that um, a lot of people were able to start working remotely, but they were still working. Most people were still working their jobs for other people. Um, and I had already started my business many years ago. I just ended up bringing everything online. And that was a dream of mine. You know, that was like the missing element. I had already started my business. I was already doing things I love doing, but the missing element was to be able to do it from anywhere in the world and impact even more people doing so. And so once I did that for myself, I said, wow, okay, let me put this blueprint together so I can help other people kind of launch in the same direction. And so that's what I'm doing now. And that's the freedom lifestyle. I call it my freedom lifestyle launch pad to have the choice to live anywhere, work from anywhere, do whatever you want that makes you happy, work with whoever you want that brings you joy and impact the world in a big way. So once you have all of those elements in place, it's like you're in bliss. And I call that the bliss zone. You arrive at the bliss zone. I mean, what right. better? I love that. Yeah. The bliss zone. Yeah. <laughs> nice. So what, uh, gosh, I mean, that just gives everybody, I mean, mind blown of just the possibilities out there um, that it, it can be for anybody. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, even if you're a, a mom, you know, I mean, doesn't mean you have to be a globetrotter, um, but you can start your own business, you know, or work from home or, you know, I mean, be creative and, and, and let your intuition find the path for you, you know? Yes. Um, so tell us a little bit about what you've got going on. How can our listener listeners find you and, uh, what do you have going for them? Yeah. So, um, so I've got, I've got two amazing programs that help people really get on that path and they are, the exact same things that I did for myself. I had to declutter my life 
from the inside out and remove everything that wasn't serving me. As I mentioned, I had to uh, get rid of the, the big house, all the things, the um, things that were keeping me stuck, like the limiting beliefs up here, um, the fears, the ego talking, getting in the way, um, decluttered the corporate job that wasn't serving me, got rid of the husband, the marriage, all of that, and really go towards the things that would serve me. And so when and that I doesn't mean that everybody has to de declutter all those things. If they're working right. for you, you can keep them. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> the key is to declutter the things that aren't serving you, right? And so when I did that, I realized, I think this is part of my calling is to help other people who want to do the same thing for themselves and really go towards the things that are going to bring them happiness. And so I created a program called Declutter Your Life from the Inside Out. And then I've got three specific phases that I've designed that help you do that, no matter what area of your life you need to declutter. And then during the pandemic, when I brought my, my business completely online, and I realized that a lot of people wanted to do the same thing, to have that freedom lifestyle and be able to have an impactful passion business from anywhere in the world, you know, have that freedom. Um, then I sat down and I created a blueprint around that too. And that's the digital entrepreneurs freedom lifestyle launch pad, nice. where I help you launch from conception to launch um, in just a matter of months and bring that passion business to life. If you've been thinking about it, you know, we can make it happen. And so those are the two big programs I have going on right now. Um, and I always tell people if, there's something that you've been thinking of doing and you just never knew where to start. Like the time is now really life is too short. The time is now. Cause if not now, then when, right. Seriously, ask yourself, if not now, then when, what are you waiting for? Right. The time is now. And if you're listening to this, then chances are you had an intention that you put out into the universe right? And that's your intuition, right? Speaking um, that you've got to do something about it. You are here. You've landed here. You're listening to this story. You're listening to, um, you know, other people speak about making a change in their life. So I think your time has arrived. Right. And because if you're thinking 10, 20, 30 years from now, and you're looking back and going, ah, I, I didn't try. Mm -hmm. And now it's, I can't, you know, maybe exactly. you're just at the end of your, your life here. And you're like, I, I didn't do it. You know, I would rather give it a shot, try, you know, and, and maybe make some mistakes along the way than not ever try. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I tell everyone it's going to be scary. The unknown is always scary, but the good news is that you don't have to go it alone, right? Because mm -hmm. I've been there. I've been where you are. I've been where you are. I've walked that path. I've gotten to the other side. It wasn't so bad, right? And and I can help you get there, but you don't have to do it alone like I did, right? Yeah. And then we can get you there. So I want to put a very genuine offer out there. If anyone is interested in taking that chance and taking that first step and you have questions flooding your brain right now, like, oh my gosh, I have so many ideas. You've opened my, my eyes to so many new things, but I, I don't know where to start, what to do, you know, um, then I can offer you a conversation with me and I can give you my expert opinion, my expert advice. Um, we can strategize together, whatever you want to talk about, 30 minute session. Um, but, you know, you just have a couple of days to schedule it with me because, um, because anytime I offer something like that, it fills up and I've got to cut it off at some point. Yeah. So, yeah. So two days, um, following the end of this summit, um, by the end of the day, let's say like 5 PM, 5 PM, my time zone, Eastern time zone on, uh, the 13th, the 13th. Yes. Okay. All right. So if you want to talk to Michelle, um, we'll give you, uh, an, a way to get in touch with her, yes. um, and make sure you sign up before 5 PM Eastern standard time, February 13th. That's Mm -hmm. awesome. Yes. And you can just send me an email and just let me know that you heard me talk and you want to take advantage of the 30 minute strategy session and pick my brain or whatever you want to do. Um, just email me at organized 
lifebymichelle at gmail.com. Perfect. I'll put that right here so everybody can see it. Awesome. Well, thank you, Michelle. Um, I think you really um, uh, lit a light bulb up on uh, many people's minds out there of, hmm, yeah, I'm, I've been there. I I went through what with Michelle went through, but I want to, I want to what she's got. <laughs> yes. So yes. If you're thinking that, um, stop just sitting there and thinking and wishing and dreaming talk to the person who has what you're looking for. Right. Yeah. And let's, let's get something going. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much, Michelle. Um, you're definitely an inspiration of, to freedom. Um, and I, I just am always, uh, in, in awe of, of you and the things that you do and you're so powerful. You're so lovely. You're such a joy to talk to. And, um, uh, so I, I encourage everybody to reach out to, um, Michelle, if you really feel a connection there and you're ready. Thank you so much, Susan. This was wonderful. So I'm so happy to be here. And as always, you're, you're an absolute joy to work with. So I'm glad <laughs> you're bringing wonderful things to your community. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Thanks for listening to this episode of the Create Happy Now podcast. Please be sure to subscribe. And if you are watching on YouTube, hit that notification bell. If you have a topic to suggest, please leave a comment below. Catch the Create Happy Now podcast on iTunes, Google Podcasts, Podbean, Spotify, Audible, iHeartRadio, Player FM, Listen Notes, and Podchaser. Check out other YouTube videos on the Create Happy Now YouTube channel. And if you want more, check down below for resources, courses, and events, or go to www.createhappynow.com.